Hello there, I'm Offie D, and I was disappointed by Sands of Salzar. We're going to talk about that. What is Sands of Salzar? I'll tell you what I knew about it before going in. It's Chinese Mountain Blade, and that's a very accurate description. It's more accurate than I expected, and also on many levels as well. It has both the details and the spirit of the old Mountain Blade before Bannerlord. And hopefully we'll see what I mean by that as we go on. You start by making a character by picking a class and picking an appearance. I chose to make somebody who looks exactly the same as me. But before we really get started, I wanted to waste your time. I mean, tell you a story that is somewhat related to what we'll be talking about today, very tangentially. Although also, here's another point to mention before we get started. Right at the start, you are an amnesiac protagonist. Here's the story. Last night, I had a dream. Yes, it's one of those stories, and this is actually going to be relevant, I assure you. In the dream, I was commentating on a game just like I am right now, and in that game, there was this intriguing mechanic where every now and again the game would stop and ask you to do a fit the shapes in the correctly shaped hole mini game. You know, like the baby thing, where it gives you a square, there's a thing that has a square-shaped hole in it, and we'll see if the player can put the square through the square-shaped hole. So it had this mechanic, and in my dream I was thinking about how I was going to commentate on this game, and thinking, well at first, I would have thought I would be annoyed by such a distracting and pointless mechanic as having to stop to do a match the shapes game every now and again. But when I played it, my comment was going to be, that actually, it brought a refreshing change of pace to the game. Because it's nice to stop and do something really easy all the time, to be affirmed, to be like, yes, I am still at least as intelligent as a baby. And I felt good about that, and in my commentary I was going to praise the developers for having the boldness to put such a stupid mechanic into the game, because it turned out so well, in my opinion. You might be thinking, that's a nice argument, Devin. Why don't you back it up with the source? My source is, it was revealed to me in a dream. Well, the point is going to be, that's how easily impressed I can be in the right situation. A game that makes you do baby match the shapes activities, I can plausibly rationalize putting that into a game and rationalize saying that it's good or for there to be a reason why it would be good to do something that sounds so bad. That's why Sands of Salzar really disappoints me, because it is the absolute opposite situation. Sands of Salzar's design to me looks really good on paper, but when you actually play it and see how it works, it's really bad. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, and that's why I wasted your time. I mean, told you that story about my dream last night. So why do I say this? I wanted to start off by just being very general and not really pointing at anything specific. I'm going to tell you my impression of the game, and then maybe we'll see some examples that led to that impression in the footage, or maybe you've already seen them in the footage I'm showing you now. There is a sense of a lack of professionalism. Maybe that's the best way of putting it. There's a sense of a jank -e ness and that's not the best way of putting it. There's a sense that this game was made in a slightly haphazard way, probably not helped by the fact that it had to be translated from Chinese. I'm guessing it was originally developed in Chinese. And there are lots of mistakes, like it looks like it was never proofread or edited by a native English speaker. So there are both weird turns of phrase and like mistakes that don't really work properly in English quite frequently. It's really annoying. I was thinking about this the other day about translating things into English because I work for Kings and Generals, where a lot of the writers actually don't speak English as their first language, I often see turns of phrase and I think, I guess that's grammatically correct, but I never would have said it like that, because English is weird like that as a language, where there are loads of different grammatically correct ways of arranging sentences, because it's like a mashup of so many different languages, but there's like always a correct one, and you just have to know the correct one by sheer experience. Like, people actually say phrases in this really particular fashion. So like having two words be swapped around or something is fine grammatically. It might even be superior grammatically, but people don't say that, so it sounds weird. That's the kind of vibe you get from the text in this game, but really that doesn't matter, so I don't know why I'm harping on about that. 
it's more so just kind of everything. It's really hard for me to quickly sum up what the problem with this game is. But it has so much promise. Let's quickly say something good instead. You might have seen various menus and things shooting past. There are tons of systems in this game. You can level up loads of stuff. You can build up a party of heroes and regular troops like in Mountain Blade, because this is basically Mountain Blade. You can fight bandits, as it's suggesting I do here, to level up and get your early experience points. It is very much like Mountain Blade in that you start off fighting quote-unquote looters, walking around this map to get experience points. It's a little bit more plot-focused than Mountain Blade, but because you are an amnesiac protagonist and the plot is very vague, I don't know, I guess it didn't come up in the first couple of hours of playing like what the plot focus of the game really was, so I didn't notice it very much. And the game gives you lots of freedom for what to do and where to go. There are things to find in the world, you can trade things between towns, you can do quests, essentially. It's Mountain Blade. I'm just going to keep saying that because even though it's not like obvious looking at it, it is actually Mountain Blade as it turns out. Here's one looking at it based thing that I do want to say. A legendary off ED comment where he comments on something that you can see on the screen. Happens once in a while. This game has two art styles at the same time. And I think that's why it looks kind of janky. Like in terms of the aesthetic, there's kind of a more interesting one and a less interesting one on top of each other. Like say these buildings you can see there. They're in a more cartoonish, flash game, old internet game style aesthetic, which is set apart from the more quote unquote Asian looking painted backgrounds, which are in lower resolution and are notably in a lower resolution than everything that's in the quote unquote foreground, like the sprites being placed onto the map. And they also look better despite being in low resolution. So we're sort of going through this painterly world, but encountering stuff that looks like it's straight out of a noughties scam online MMO or something like that. Like it's not necessarily that it's badly done, it just evokes the aesthetic of a bad game because bad games have done it like this in the past. Whereas the more like inkish Chinese style painterly backgrounds look better to me and were more interesting. And the clash there is something that's noticeable throughout. I don't actually know what that style is called because I don't know anything about art. All I know is something something early 2000s online scam MMO. There's some kind of vibe coming through here which is hitting me hard clearly. So hard that I'm dazed and can't describe it. That statue of a guy there is a good example. There's like the Chinese style art that looks better than other stuff. Here we are in battle with some snakes by the looks of things. So a brief look at the battle system. Here's where it's not quite like Mountain Blade because while you can get troops and give them formations and order them to do things, the actual fights take place in a very small arena in which, as shown by that snake there, stuff always gets stuck on terrain and stuck in the corners. So it's really glitchy. But more importantly, you have lots of abilities to use. So it's more like managing cooldowns in an MMO style than like giving orders in a medieval battle tactics style. And that's probably a downside to the game in my opinion. I do kind of like the way the battle system works, but I also probably would have preferred it if they had more ambition and more scale about the fights, like these little battles between one or two people. Well, they're not that interesting, the arena's tiny, we're just kind of using magic and standing still, spamming cooldown abilities. It's very MMO-ish, but without any of the other stuff, like the combat in MMOs is kind of good in a strategic way. It's not really good for like these really small, quick encounters. There's another rant brewing in the background there, so let's not go into that. What I actually did want to go into is I wanted to make a dual complaint compliment, which is that I think the way the game rips off everything from Mountain Blade so absolutely outrageously is both good and bad. It's both a shame. I was disappointed to see how closely it ripped off Mountain Blade, but I also thought I wish it took more from Mountain Blade, for example in the battle system just there. But also, I was mad at the game for being so Mountain Blade-like, just because it's like, can't we think of something new? The Mountain Blade formula, which for some reason I keep seeing repeated, isn't a good formula to like base a game upon. Like I remember the very original Mountain Blade, everyone thought it sucked. It was only like through the Mountain Blade Warband re-release where they kind of fixed it and made it less janky 
that it began to come together and become a 7 out of 10 reviewed game, the lowest score game reviewers could give out at the time. And it kind of came into its own because it was so unique, and in particular, I think, because it had so much mod potential. The actual Mountain Blade formula of like walking between towns and each town having a copy-paste population that says like, I'm the village elder, here you can recruit two peasants to join your warband in exchange for ten gold, and could you deliver a letter to this commander? They were last seen near this settlement. That thing. It feels so old-fashioned to me, maybe because from my specific perspective it literally is old-fashioned, because I played it a long time ago, those sorts of things. Well anyway. If you've played Mountain Blade Warband in any sort of detail, you've also played this game to a great extent, and that's probably a problem. That said, this game isn't aimed at me, so like these complaints don't matter very much. If this is essentially Chinese Mountain Blade, then it might be that it's bringing this formula for the first time to a new audience, and if they're lucky, they will have developed this game in a slightly more robust way than Mountain Blade. Like, Mountain Blade is developed by somehow getting loads of .txt files to talk together in, in a way that, in some unknown way, produces a game to appear on your computer. It's really old school, and that's probably one of the big problems with it. And I imagine that when they made Bannerlord 2, and it turned out to be exactly the same as the original game, it was because they spent the entire development time trying to not make it a whole bunch of text files talking to each other, like to make it as a normal game in a normal game engine. And at some point along the way, the actual game design got forgotten. Well, anyway, I'm literally just ranting about some other games that come to mind. What exactly is going on with Chinese Mountain Blade, with Sands of Salzar? It's just not good enough. That's what I'm saying, essentially. We can sit here all day pointing at the specific game design and being like, well, maybe they shouldn't have used this design, maybe they shouldn't have used that design. But actually, even if the game has the perfect design, there is another factor. And this is the fun thing about talking about video games specifically as a cultural critique thing. When it comes to video games, a lot of the quality in the delivery of the potential of a game design is in more objective things, it's in the execution. So stuff like there being glitches isn't some opinion-based subjective criticism to make, it's an objective criticism where we can just say, this is bad, this means the developers failed, it should not have been like this, in a more objective sort of way. And this is essentially the problem with this game. It's just janky and weird in an old-fashioned kind of way, and it has many glitches. That's a pretty boring first impression to come down on, and I guess that's what I wanted to get across. I was disappointed, because you might be looking at this and thinking, this looks kind of cool, and I would agree. This game actually is kind of cool, and I bet if you didn't care about all the jank, you'd have a great time getting more and more powerful, like getting more and more spells, getting a big army and leveling it up, and doing the Mountain Blade stuff, because you can conquer territory and all of the good stuff, and there's factions and relations, and you can try and chat up individual people in factions, that sort of thing. You know, it's like Mountain Blade, as I keep saying. It's all there, but it didn't pull me in because of the jank, because the quality isn't high enough, essentially. So I'm just going to push there against that point. It is possible to do a bad job implementing a good game design and end up with a bad game as a result. So we're not even really talking about mechanics and stuff like I usually enjoy ranting about. We're just talking about, like, well, the art styles clash. The writing has too many errors in it. Things like that. The quality isn't good enough. Too many mistakes. This is something that is almost impossible to get across by just ranting over random footage. So all I can do is appeal to somebody else who might know what I'm talking about. In fact, I don't have to because I've already read the reviews of this game and I know that other people also think this vague thing I'm getting at. So this is a problem. It's a decent idea with low quality. And speaking of the reviews, I do remember actually that this game looks like it was once well reviewed in the past because it used to be in early access. So this is a post-early access game that isn't finished. It has very clear like problems with it you'd see right away. And you can see how that's affected the review scores, I think. Because they've gone down and down over time as the promise of the game evaporates. Like you can imagine people, when it's in early access and is worse than it is now, giving it a higher review anyway because they believe in the project. They believe something good's going to come of this, so they give it a good review or they have more charitability when it comes to reviewing it. 
but instead here in the finished product. We've seen a few battles so far, you might have noted, they're all exactly the same, there's always somebody glitchily stuck in the corner, I'm just kind of doing these weird like MMO style moves and not doing anything tactically really, and I don't know. You can probably see that this game would have some issues as a Mountain Blade like. And what I want to do is ask you to simply believe that what I'm saying is true, because it's very difficult to me for me to demonstrate a vibes based argument as usual. Looks like for some reason I couldn't click on that enemy. Oh well. Whew. And of course, there is actually a game design point to make, which is that we're doing the thing. We're fighting infinite supplies of looters and bandits, the bad part of the Mountain Blade formula that I remember I almost always use mods or cheats or something to skip because it's just not interesting. It's a very slow, easy and inevitable rise to power and all of the stuff in the game happens after you do it, but it's just slow and boring. Well, here it is in this game as well. I'm really mixing my criticism here. I really don't have a point, like even less so than usual. I'm just trying to vent whatever it is I think about this game, and I'm not even sure what it is. Looking at it now, like this footage is from quite a long time ago. I'm looking at it thinking, hmm, this looks kind of cool. I'd like to play this game. And I do remember, after I stopped playing it, I did consider going back to play it some more because I kind of liked the potential of the game, which is something that often happens on this channel. I play a game, dislike it, force myself to play it again for some reason, and then I do like it. So this game might have been one of those, but it didn't make the cut, it seems, for one reason or another, and one of those reasons or the others might have been said so far, or might still yet to be said in this extremely unstructured video on this kind of messy game. We are once again doing the meta commentary thing where it's like, hmm, your commentary is a real mess, and I'm like, I know, right? That's what it's like playing Sands of Salzar. Seems kind of unfinished and unprofessional, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm being real clever right here, guys, in such a way that it's convenient to me because it's easy and I don't have to do any work. Which maybe is what happened with Sands of Salzar. I don't know, which of course is the real takeaway. I'm back with this new idea, which is that I would talk about the game. So here is something in the game. We're going to town and you can kind of see why I'm saying this is Mountain Blade. This stuff we're seeing here is a graphical UI version of Mountain Blade's text adventure style UI. The actual decisions you make and the options you have are the same. So here we are recruiting companions. This guy won't join me until he likes me, but I can give him a thing, just like some item that dropped from battle. And then he will join me. So with that, we've got another companion character. You can level them up and get skills in a Mountain Blade-y sort of way. Pretty good, huh? And I was kind of thinking, this video has become a unique video for me. I came into this, as I think I said at the beginning, to complain about this game. But usually, like when I look at the footage, I remember what it was that I had a problem with and I would be able to make my complaints. Here, I look at it and I think, this looks kind of good. What was it I didn't like about this again? Like, I would play this. What was the problem again? Because despite me complaining the other day about how the Mountain Blade formula is terrible and such, blah, 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 I like it. We're back at it again with the objective versus subjective <laughs> gameplay commentary style I like to annoy myself and everybody else with. I actually like playing this. I just think it shouldn't be like this. Like, it would probably be better, and I would like it more if it was better, but I'm fine with it as it is. Well, there's a little thing that's different from Mountain Blade, you can see there. Some of the battles are on these cooldown timers, so you can repeatedly fight something for loot every seven in-game days, as it was saying. The thing about that is, that's a real online scam MMO from the noughties vibe, isn't it? So maybe that's just adding to this pile of things where I sort of get put off by the vibe, a real vibe space commentary. Here I am talking to the village elder, to recruit some troops from this quote-unquote village. Essentially a building represents a village, so it's a bit more abstract than in Mountain Blade, but in terms of sheer mechanics it is the same thing. We had the option there to either recruit or abandon those troops, with abandon probably being a mistranslation of like cancel or like don't recruit them, that sort of thing. And that's an example of maybe some of the small mistakes that are noticeable and the thing that feels off about the game, which is really hard to put across. Just then, I almost had the chance to recruit a cultured older woman who was extremely beautiful and was carrying a whip. And I get the feeling that everything would be fine if she was here. I think she could sort me out. She can fix me. Instead, I'll just remain broken as I attempt to 
tell you why this game's terrible while constantly thinking that it's good. Basically the opposite of my usual <laughs> game design ranting style. It's looking pretty cool, you can level up and recruit troops, same thing with our hero here. We don't have our whipping older lady, but we do have a fifth eye to interfere in the relationship we can set up between us and our wife's sister. It's all going well in the party. And I'm guessing there is actually something you can do with that, like you have relations with your party members and you can talk to them and stuff, a bit like in Mountain Blade. There's also equipment here, we can get stats and stuff, and there's millions of skills and stats and things to look into that I won't go through here, but well, you can see some of them on the screen. You can do builds and try to become more powerful. I actually remember the build I went for was terrible because my character, their class means they should focus on magic attack, but I kept taking skills that don't scale with magic attack. So I think I was actually very weak, not that it matters because I stopped playing pretty soon. But it was just nice. So I'm standing here now being like, yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Good mechanic. I still think though, the thing I don't like about it is not only like mistranslations or just bad vibes, but the inconsistencies of the art, the backgrounds and some of the key art and concept art and like loading screens look really good, but the sprites and the characters that pop up in conversations look much more amateurish. They look like they are out of, say it with me now kids, an early 2000s scam MMO or something like that. They're just like an amateur game production and you might see something like this appear even on like new grounds or something if you kids even know what that is you know it's not good enough i think that's what i said the other day i really liked the idea behind this game and i think they've executed it not well enough and i sympathize with the feeling that all of those people in early access i was talking about must have had where they were giving this game positive reviews because they could sense that it could be good and then ultimately we're disappointed because I guess they didn't fix it, ultimately, whoever they is. I don't even know who developed this. Well, we're doing the thing. That's the other thing I said last time, and it's still happening. We got seven money for doing the same battle as always, glitchily, with people stuck in the corner, tiny arena, no variety. I only have to do that 100 more times to complete my current quest objective. And it might be that this isn't that bad in and of itself, it's just that I've played a lot of Mountain Blade, a lot of Mountain Blade mods and Mountain Blade-like things with this really slow, loopy start. And it takes a while to get to the meat of the game, when you can really feel good about these fights and have more things to do. Although that said, I still think you don't really get the chance to command your troops in the Mountain Blade style, so that's got to be a big difference. I'm pretty sure, at least based on my impression of it, it's always going to be what we see here, where the two sides just spawn on top of each other and brawl, so it's more about having good troops. Therefore, it's more about having grinded more so you can level them up and have them have a good number attached to them, that sort of thing, and less about tactics. The tactics are really about what you do personally, because you have a lot more to do than the main character in, in Mountain Blade did. And that's the difference, I suppose. It's also kind of an improvement, you could say, because one thing I don't like about Mountain Blade is that at the start of battles, it takes a long time to get the action going. I was complaining about that in a recent video, actually, and I ended up using mods to get around it. Here, well, you could say, that's fixed, isn't it? Because the fight just kind of happens. And this fight I managed to stumble across was even different to the other fights, so that's nice. We've got some sort of mini siege battle where there are buildings you have to destroy, and there are millions of enemies, and I'm getting absolutely annihilated, as you can see there. However, in the top right, it says we have revives. You can note that it's, it's lacking a UI, the revives thing. Just unprofessional, that thing I keep saying, like, a real quote-unquote game developer would have made that look slightly better, and indeed most of the rest of the game looks better, so why is that left like that? You can imagine someone being like, oh it's early access, they'll fix that. Well, this is post-release, it's version 1 point something. They didn't fix it, and that just indicates a lack of care, which is annoying. But the reason it's annoying is because of the promise of the game. Like, if I thought the actual mechanics really did suck, it would be like, well, who cares that it's, like, not drawn to high enough fidelity? Who cares that the UI is missing something? Who cares that occasionally it's mistranslated or uses, like, a foreign-sounding turn of phrase? It's not localized, quote-unquote, fully into, I don't know, what, whatever I'm expecting. The Queen's bloody British English. There'll always be an England, and England shall be free. If England means as much to you... As England meets to me! <clears throat> I 
average English person dot mp3. And I think the point I was going to make was that who would care about all of that if there wasn't secretly a good game hidden behind all of this stuff? So probably like those early access people, I wish more time, effort, money, or whatever it would have needed, more just talent straight up, had gone into making this Chinese Mountain Blade clone because it was actually going to be a unique take on the formula that while it's going to have all the same problems, I'm willing to put up with those problems because I like the formula enough overall, even though I also recommend against actually using it. You probably should think of a better formula. But since we've got this far, it's still looking pretty interesting. It's just a shame that the quote-unquote vibes are off, where the vibe, I think, what I'm actually focusing down on here and finally getting to the bottom of, is just the fidelity, the quality. The resolution of some of the textures is too low. Some of the text doesn't quote-unquote seem right to me. There are glitches in battles where stuff gets stuck on the walls. You might have seen earlier, like, half my army got stuck on the wall at the start of this fight. What was that coming up on the right? It kind of looked like you could give orders to troops or something there on the right. Well, it's gone now and the troops are dead as this battle <laughs> kind of winds down. And I'm, like, slamming the keys, like, well, now what do I do? I'm stuck. I'm dead. Can we just sort of retreat? I think I'm waiting for this enemy soldier to gradually kill my base so that I technically lose the battle. Then I can leave. So we're kind of stuck here. Interestingly, on the left, you have some speed up controls, and by speed up, I mean speed down. You can make the fight slower, but not faster, whereas right now, faster would be great. So it's all happening. We've encountered another problem, but I don't know. I, I literally don't know. I'm so on the fence about this game. I'm kind of looking at it thinking, I actually do want to play it again. But then I'm seeing things like this, and it's like, ah, oh, that's why I didn't want to play it. Frustrating. This, but better, Sands of Salazar 2, it's exactly the same, but they tried harder. Looks like I found a way to get out of this situation, I can load an old save so I don't have to bother waiting for me to lose. We could even avoid losing entirely, so that's a nice idea. Basically, I'm stuck with what I call the curse of early access. It's still, still here, the thing where a game doesn't feel right, doesn't feel finished. Usually we'd sit back and say, Oh, they'll fix it, and I'd be annoyed being like, oh, they'll fix it. Why didn't they fix it already for when I played it? Here, we have a game that claims to be finished, that claims to have exited Early Access, but it feels like it hasn't. And that's the problem, because that's even worse, actually. This is the deeper curse of Early Access. The Early Access game where they will never finish it, where they, it doesn't even have the promise of being finished. We've all been had, essentially, or at least people who played this in the past have been had. I have been less had because I played it after release and was just straight up normal disappointed. But it is worth pointing out this is actually a double Curse of Early Access instance where all of this stuff was probably once swept under the rug because people said, oh, they'll fix it. But because it's swept under the rug, the developers now think, I don't have to fix it. People are giving this game good reviews, even with all the problems, and they don't prioritize fixing the problems. So we could even to some extent blame those people giving it good reviews in early access. Maybe people should be more conscious of the curse of early access and be like, relentlessly put pressure on early access developers because if you don't, and you've already given them the money, they're in a great position to screw you over. And I think I just want to make this a very subtle cautionary tale, one with no drama because this game isn't really bad enough to go off on a true rant being like, see, this is what you get. It's more kind of like, see, this is what you get. It's subpar. Oh well. Who cares that Sands of Salazar is subpar? Nobody, but for me, for a brief period of like 40 minutes in my life, things would have been better if Sands of Salazar wasn't subpar. So in principle, I want to encourage everybody to beware of the curse of early access. And what exactly is the curse of early access? I'll tell you what it is, because it's quite simple. Does the game say early access on it? If so, it has the curse of early access. Like already that's a problem. You can expect your life to be worse if you go through a door that says early access on it. Or at least you can expect it to be worse than it would have been if you'd gone through a different door and then gone through the original door later or some combination of things. But of course, Sands of Salazar here is an example of where that doesn't even work out and you're extra screwed. We can't have nice things. That's the conclusion. We get the bad Sands of Salazar in this timeline because we sinned too hard. 
What are we supposed to do about that? Well, I think literally the only thing we can do is complain. So what I'm doing here is the heroic solution to this problem. Just complain about it, and maybe this drop in the ocean will have enough influence to give one extra dollar of budget to some other early access game, making the world marginally better. A true hero has arisen once again. Here's another Mountain Blady thing that happened. You can get the ransom quest from Mountain Blade, where they give you some money, and you can go to defeat some bandits to keep the money or pay it to get somebody back. Looks like I couldn't be bothered to do it, and I'm sure it's because I was like, oh, it's that quest from Mountain Blade. Okay, I don't care. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Instead, we'll poke around, still looking for new friends. This girl says, ding, ding, dong, don't bother me. Well, how can I not bother you with an opening line like that? Ding, ding, dong indeed, Lotus Kabir. Unfortunately, I can't make friends with her because I don't have anything interesting in my inventory. Everybody's a real gold digger in this game. Here we have a conversation between our party members, the kind of thing that occasionally happened in Mountain Blade, where your people would have some sort of moral dilemma, and because they have alignments, maybe your party isn't aligned properly with all of them in your behavior, and you have to settle some things. Here, I think one of our party members somehow stole some cash and we had the option to keep it, and I'm guessing that my ex-wife's sister would have liked me more if we gave it back or something like that. Unfortunately, I am also a gold digger, so I'm going with the guy instead because he gave me some ill-gotten gains. Now, let's go and kill people for more money, essentially, so yes, I'm gonna say it one more time. We're doing the Mountain Blade thing. I've only played this game for like an hour, so like this commentary is basically all of the stuff that happened. And it's mainly this, just walking around, finding those battles, and doing them. And that is, possibly, one of the reasons why even though I'm looking at the game and thinking like, this looks good, I kind of remember not liking it because I didn't like the early game. I have this real suspicion that if I pushed through all of my weird hang-ups and just didn't care about things, I actually would like this game. There's me getting rid of the one-eyed guy because I found a hotter guy who's willing to join my party. It's all happening in Luofeng Di's harem in Sands of Salzar. Yes, the game is actually called Sands of Salzar, despite me saying Sands of Salazar almost every time. Back at it again with that doesn't even know the name of the game commentary, adding more credibility to my points for sure. The final thing I did in the game was this quest that was actually quite interesting, so it's a shame it ended up being the final thing I did. Maybe I was just at the end of my tether for one reason or another. The quest begins with you having to answer a bunch of, like, maths questions, I suppose, where to enter a tournament you have to prove you have the intelligence to be worthy of entering the tournament. So we do these little things, and I had to get out a pen and paper and do them, like, as equations, like in the bad old days. It's the kind of maths puzzle that I remember receiving, like, back in the day, like, almost as a job interview preparation thing or something like that. Like, this is how you test whether someone is clever. You see if they can do these little, like, number puzzles. The thing is, they're doable, and I was able to do them because I am a maths person. I did a, a ridiculous amount of maths in university, so I guess I can do this kind of thing. But this kind of approach to maths never comes up anywhere. You're wasting your time if you're trying to get good at stuff by, like, learning how to do logic puzzles. This is my, like, cynical take on a lot of IQ testy type things, which is what somebody who has a low IQ would say when trying to describe their feelings. Essentially, I did these things, and it reminded me of, like, being mad at how pointless it was to be learning how to do these things, or something like that. Maybe that actually affected my opinion of the game. But I did want to say, I thought it was novel, it was interesting, although it was also annoying at the same time. And you could even make the argument that like this is testing something the game hasn't taught you from a pure game design and game experience perspective. There shouldn't be any gateways in the game that can't be overcome by being good at the game. So like doing maths puzzles isn't the game, so I should never have to do them to progress in the game, that sort of thing. That's not like some rule, just like in principle, if you were trying to make a really efficient game design. It should only ever ask you to do things that the game itself is encouraging you to learn about. Well, anyway, I've got every excuse to not do the maths puzzles. It looks like I was able to do it, and the reward is you get to do a little arena battle, like in, I don't know, Mountain Blade or something. And if you win the arena battle, which I did, they'll give you some stuff. 
and that's good. There's also some sort of plot going on here. I wasn't paying full attention to this plot, or any attention really. I think a couple of the people here are leaders of a couple of the factions. Someone comes and asks for the treasure of some old city or something. The lady is talking about some history, and this guy says, I don't want to talk to you about this. Hand over the treasure of Jamal City. And I'm going to highlight this as a really pointless example of why I think the game isn't 100% localized. If I'd been localizing it, I would have written, I don't care, hand over the treasure. The reason being that while this is a perfectly fine thing to say in English, the phrase, I don't want to talk to you about this, is a very formal phrase, indicative of a very calm mood as well, which isn't what I was going on in context, I think, anyway. And it's probably because I don't want to talk to you about this is the translation of whatever they actually said in Chinese, where it wouldn't have been such an unusual thing to say that. And I don't care would be the actual please stop talking about your topic because I want to talk about my topic now, aggressive interjection. Well, you know what? I don't think we should actually go into this because I could probably complain until the end of time about m the fact that everything in the world isn't written exactly as I would write it. But that was a possible example anyway of the thing I mentioned before where maybe it needs a s another layer of localization because it's slightly unnatural. And I'm trying to essentially convince myself that this feeling I have, this memory, that there was something wrong with the text, isn't completely made up. It's possible that this feeling I came away with actually had a cause, because usually I don't come away from games with this feeling, so something caused it. Maybe it was little things like that. You might have seen that on the battle results screen, there was like four on this translation, so there are places where it's more obvious, but for whatever reason I decided to pause there and show you one where it's not obvious at all, because literally it was what I thought of when talking just now. More extremely high quality analysis, where sometimes by random chance I come across points to make. That's pretty much how this analysis has been going the entire time for this video, because as mentioned I didn't really remember what the problem I had with the game even was, only that I had a problem. And maybe that's the final comment to make overall. I'm looking back at the game, thinking it looks good, I kind of remember it being good, I kind of analyze it as being good from the outside, but then also spot little things where I'm like, oh, maybe that was what I didn't like, and I have a vague memory of not liking it. Maybe I was just mad, because I played this game after playing the previous two games on this channel, which were also non-starters for me. Maybe I was just really hoping for a really polished experience. So this whole it's not good enough thing from me is actually holding it to too high a standard, because I just really wanted something that was extremely good, so this quite good game isn't good enough, quote unquote. Maybe it's still good, and I kind of feel like, looking back on it, I actually do want to play this game, because I like all the mechanics I'm seeing, I like the stuff, I like the woman with the whip, there's so much to offer in this game. But for whatever reason, it wasn't happening for me. What I'm going to do is just leave this video here, you're going to have to decide what the reason I didn't like this game was. It does seem though that in the reviews of the game there are plenty of other people not liking it as well and a lot of the vibe was vaguely along the lines also of it's not good enough but probably with some more detailed and specific things because maybe those people actually bothered to play the game before coming to their conclusion. Indeed this is very much a first impressions video. So all we can do is leave it at that. My first impression was bad. My second impression now is that it's good. So where does that leave me? I don't know. I kind of feel like I want to play this game again. But more so, I wish the game was in early access. I said it, you'll never hear me saying that again probably. I wish it was in early access so that I could think they'll improve upon this. But knowing they probably won't improve upon this is disappointing to think about. So that's a really interesting angle for me because usually I would go completely the other way and be like, ugh, early access, get out of my face. Now I'm like, please, I'm begging you, go back into early access, like stop releasing it, put it back into development because I need you to fix this stuff for me. She had a whip! And that's probably all there is to say on Sands of Salzar. Thanks for watching. Next up, I actually did find a real game that I could play the whole way through and was also made with very poor production values and generally doesn't quote unquote look good. It's also filled with 
unprofessional things or not good enough type things, but I didn't think that about it at all. I thought it was really good overall. So we'll get to explore once again something that's essentially the opposite of what I said here. As usual on this channel, the consistency remains at zero, just where I like it to be. I'll see you next time for whatever it is I'm talking about right now.